All right, praise God, and thank you for tuning in to this TMT video. Uh, last time I spoke to you, I got to talk to you about the uh, the shepherding movement. We dealt with a brief history on the shepherding movement, uh, shepherding discipleship movement. Um, I do want to encourage you and let you know that there are a lot of uh, good shepherds out there um, that have a, a the good shepherd's heart. And so uh, if you have experienced spiritual abuse, don't give up your... Uh, uh, your search, don't give up your uh, faith, don't give up uh, fellowshipping with the saints, you continue praying and continue searching on where it is that God uh, wants you to be, to where you can be receive uh, love and nurturing from a good shepherd, a good shepherds um, Amen, also um, um, I, I said in my last video that if you have been spiritually abused or recognized spiritual abuse um, that you need to confront it, um, I want to make sure we all understand that there's a biblical way to confront um, our elders. We don't just go giving them a piece of our mind or we don't just go talking about them um, and spreading a bunch of mess around about them. The Bible lets us know how to deal with them and we deal with our elders in uh, 1 Timothy uh, 5 chapter 9, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 19 through 20 tells us how we deal with our elders. Okay. I also want to announce that Pastor Mike uh, uh, a Family of God Christian Fellowship here uh, in Apache, Arizona uh, will be doing a question and answer broadcast. It's planned for the third Tuesday of the month, uh, which is tonight at 9 p.m. Um, Arizona time, um, and the fifth Tuesday of the month at 9 p.m. Arizona time. Um, and it's going to be dealing with the topic of uh, shepherding movement or spiritual abuse. Um, I know something of Pastor Mike. He won't spend too much time on the problem. He likes to get to the solution. Right in the solution, he says the purpose is to, to facilitate repentance, forgiveness, healing, restoration, and salvation. Amen. And so I'm encouraging you to call in and, and be encouraged and, and be strengthened. Share your testimonies and your stories and, and, um, um, and um, just call in and be encouraged. Okay. Um, you can also watch it live at uh, www.familyvaluesradio.net. Okay, www.familyvaluesradio.net, or you can call a 1-800 number that you'll see across your screen. Okay? All right, so let's get into some of these teachings here. Uh, one of the things that the Shepherding uh, Discipleship Movement taught and is still being practiced and taught today is Christ does not work in our lives directly. He rules through delegated authority, which is the shepherds. Uh, we must submit to our shepherds like we would submit to Christ himself. Now, uh, uh, this submission go uh, in this teaching, it goes beyond just the biblical advice and counsel that they would give. It's actually talking about uh, decisions in, in your life um, in, with your family. Um, if you were to disobey uh, some advice or counsel that these pastors gave you um, uh, with your life and with your family that, that uh, was just their opinion or anything like that, if you didn't follow it or submit to it, these pastors or shepherds uh, would actually be angry with you and they would consider you as rebellious. Okay? My Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 16, um, that uh, God has given all believers of the Spirit that we may know the things He has freely given. Okay, um, and, and that we may judge all things, okay, and that we have the mind of Christ. Okay, this is not just for the speaking to leaders, right, this is for the body of Christ. Everybody who's been born again and have the Holy Spirit, um, uh, you have been, uh, God gave us so you can know freely the things that he's given and to judge all things. We have the mind of Christ, okay. I um, want to make sure uh, we all understand that. Um, Another thing that's taught is that we must obey or submit to our shepherds because they are leaders, not because they're right or not because they're leading by a godly example. Um, it's said that if they, if they lead us in the wrong direction or they, uh, uh, and, and we end up in sin, that God will forgive us because of our submission to that leadership. Um, that, that is ridiculous. Our leadership is not our covering. Um, our leadership is not, um, has not atoned for our sins. And so um, uh, we're not covered. Christ covers us. Uh, our submission to Christ covers us. Okay, um, um, and we don't follow our leadership blindly. Again, we have been given, if our leader is found to be in sin or to be in error, 1 Timothy 5, 19 to 20 tells us how we ought to address our leadership, okay, in situations like that. Um, there's a common teaching going around the day um, um, that our leadership or our shepherds are our covering or they are our headship, right? And to not submit to this headship um, um, would cause you to be... Uh, rebellious, you'd be out of the sheepfold, you would be considered a rebel, a renegade, or whatever it is that they want to call you, um, um, and you're able to be deceived. Um, this is important because um, 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 I've heard pastors say over and over and over again, um, I'm the headship, uh, this is my house, um, uh, this is my house, um, I'm your covering, or who's your covering? People say, who's your covering? Um, um, uh, this is not biblical terminology in this sense. Um, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, 
verse 22 that Christ is the head of the church. Okay? Um, um, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, right, that Christ is the head of every man. Okay? So Christ is the headship. Um, Christ is our covering. He covers our sins. Okay? It's important to notice that Psalms 91, verse 4 says God covers us. Okay? Um, so um, 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 man doesn't have a responsibility in here. Man of God, uh, your, your uh, responsibility is to be a steward over God's house. Okay? It is not yours. Amen. Um, um, also, um, the Bible says in Matthew 20, verses 25 through 28, um, Jesus dealt with his disciples and he told them not to have dominion or to lord over one another like uh, um, worldly leadership is. Okay? Um, it was a whole different style of leadership. Biblical leadership and worldly leadership is two different styles and two different purposes. Okay, worldly leadership is cr it can be cruel and, and it's dominating and, and it's 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 rulership and it's and the purpose is 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 oftentimes not for the purpose of edifying those who it, who the leader is leading. It's to edify himself and to make sure he protects his position. But godly leadership is different. The Bible says, "Let the greatest among you be a servant." Okay, Peter taught this teaching to the church uh, to a suffering church in First Peter five one through five. He note if you read that in First Peter five one through five. Note that he told that he, he was speaking to the elders amongst the flock. He didn't say the elders that were over the flock. He said they are among them. In other words, they're members as well. Right? Um, um, he, he said that, uh, that their job was to oversee, not to overlord the flock. Okay? And they must oversee it willingly, lovingly, um, and they must be willing to care for the people and not take from them and not take advantage of them. Um, you know, this was their responsibility as a shepherd. Um, um, their first primary was the flock that God had entrusted to them. And it's interesting today that I see a lot of men of God, pastors, uh, driving around in their big, beautiful cars, and they have their big, beautiful houses, and many of the members in their church are struggling. Their cars broke down. Uh, they're struggling to pay their rent, right? And, 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 and we would choose not to downgrade our vehicle, go and sell our vehicle and get that 20000 and drive a little Honda or a Nissan, right, so people in your congregation or your brothers and sisters can have transportation or have their rent paid or, or so you can help them out. Um, it, it, it seems as though it, uh, it would lower our status to drive a Toyota. <laughs> You know, I, I'm not going to get it, stay on that too long. But in the book of Acts, if you read the book of Acts, uh, chapter 2, uh, the Bible says that the believers actually sold some of their possessions to make sure there was no lack amongst them. Okay? Um, I believe that this should still be practiced in the body of Christ. This should still be practiced in the church today. Selling our possessions. Um, um, taking the equity out of our houses instead of going to buy that new Lexus that you wanted. Taking that equity, pastors, and, and meeting the needs of some of your congregation. Uh, so, um... Peter taught that, and he also said in verse 5, he says, El he says, you younger, submit to your elders. So we have a responsibility to submit. But if you look a little farther, he says, yeah, you submit to one another. So we have a responsibility in the church to submit to one another. It's a mutual thing that takes place. Paul, speaking to the church of Ephesus uh, uh, in Ephesians 5, 19, says, submit one to another. Okay? Um, with that in mind, if we were to go to Hebrews 13 and 7, the Bible says, Remember, or rehearse, or be mindful of them that have rule over you. We have already established that this leadership, or this rule, ruling, is not a dominating type of leadership, or cruel, forceful type of leadership. It is actually uh, a leading, a guiding, a directing, and a teaching. He's telling them to remember those uh, that teach the truth, remember the words that they spoke, and remember the godly example that they have laid out before you. Hebrews chapter 7, uh, 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 in, in the same chapter, go down to verse 17, it says, obey them that have rule over you. <coughs> this does not mean to blindly follow any advice or any counsel that they give you. Okay, that word obey means to be persuaded, right, to trust, to have confidence in. Okay, to be persuaded by what? To be persuaded by, by those that are leading you, uh, teaching you, guiding you, and directing you. Be persuaded by their godly example. Okay, and then we are to submit uh, uh, to them. We are to yield and surrender ourselves to godly leadership as they are teaching the word of God and as they are leading by example. We are not to blindly follow anyone. Um, Christ speaks to you personally. You have a personal relationship with Christ and Jesus Christ is the head of every man. Jesus Christ is the head of every church. The church does not belong to any man. The church belongs to Jesus Christ. You guys be blessed and I'll see you on the next video.